Hey guys, Merry Christmas. I'm here in the FLC by myself to show you the beautiful decorations and to give you the week four study on the incarnation book we've been doing with Adam Hamilton. Um, as always, you can watch previous videos to catch up or you can just dive right in and join along with us. You're not going to miss anything by not having been here the other weeks. Um, this particular study week is about light, and so I want to do a quick visual representation with you while I'm here in the FLC. So currently I'm standing facing the windows where the light is shining on me, and you probably can tell where I am just by having been in the church. But look what happens when we turn away from the light. Isn't that crazy? If I stand where the light is behind me, if I'm not looking toward the light, it changes dramatically. I'm now in the shadows, I'm fuzzy, things aren't very clear, maybe even a little weird looking, um, which is why I want to do that because as we talk about being in the light, sorry, that's going to be jumpy. What a difference that makes. So even just physically standing in light, you can tell that things are different. And so I want you to remember that representation of standing and facing light and what that would mean to others. If, if I was standing in the light and I can clearly be seen and I'm shining God's love for, around me, isn't it so much easier to see what I'm doing if I'm facing the light? There's a whole analogy there. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I thought it was cool. So we're going to start with chapter 4 where he talks about Jesus being the light. And this is one of the titles for Jesus all throughout Scripture. And we know that Scriptures start with light. Jesus, or God first separated light from darkness. Genesis, right? Let there be light. And all throughout Scriptures, it's been about the light. And so I want to pause briefly and talk about one of my favorite Christmas traditions. And that is to pile in the car with everybody together and to get something warm to drink and to drive around town or surrounding towns and look at displays of Christmas lights. Now, why is this so fascinating to me? Well, in the dark, darkness, you're drawn toward the light. And this time of year, people have added extra lights. And it's from the crazy, zany, why did you put those lights there kind of light displays to the, oh my goodness, they took so much time putting lights on each and everything that would stand still. That's a masterpiece. And this is the, really the only time of year that people put extra lights on their house and draw extra attention to what the light can do, to how it changes things. So as you're driving around in the darkness and you see these pops of bright light, you're drawn toward going to see what those lights are about. That's the analogy, guys, is that our lives are supposed to have so much light from the light that we have been instilled in us to what Jesus does for us, to showing God's love to others and being a light in their world, that people are drawn to us, to what we're doing. Hopefully by the end of this session, we'll learn more about light and you'll be more encouraged and excited to know about that light. But the big finish is that this week, the light of the world comes into the darkness and changes us forever. So let's start, get started. I want to talk about um, the different varying scriptures. I'm going to give you some scriptures to read. Genesis 1, we just talked about, let there be light, right? We're separating light from darkness. Chapter 9, um, verses 1 through 5 in John. Then in 1 John, chapter 2, 7 through 11. And why am I giving you these scriptures instead of me reading them as talking about them? Because there's a lot to talk about. But also because I want you to do a little study on your own. Because the question about those scriptures is, what is darkness representing? Because sometimes it's not just about being in the dark. Darkness can be represented by other things in scriptures. So look those up and then get back with me with your thoughts. Okay, so we're going to talk about what light actually is in in people's lives. And if you've ever had a time when you were struggling, and let's face it, 2020 has maybe given us more than enough of times when we're struggling. And let's just say something unexpected happened or something good came your way or a person stopped to be extra gracious to you or offer you a gift in some way. And it changed how you felt. It changed how you saw things after that. You can really look at that and say, that's someone bringing light into your world. Something as small as a smile, a, a kind gesture, listening to you when you needed some somebody to be like to bounce ideas off of, um, being in a situation where you just didn't think you could get out of, and then someone offers you a different way of thinking, and you're like, oh, I can. That makes sense now. I think I can do this 
algebra problem, which was always my hardest thing. And so those little gifts are like someone pouring light into you. And just like the analogy I did where I was facing the wrong way, when light gets sh shown, shined, when light is on something, you see it differently. And that's the whole purpose. Now, on Christmas Eve services, uh, which we will not be having one this year and I'm super sad about, but when you remember the Christmas Eve services from years past, there's a time when the church goes completely dark. We extinguish all the light that's in the church, all the candles, everything that has a light on it, we extinguish and we send in as much darkness as we can. And there's a few moments where that's just a little antsy, right? Where you're like, okay, you can light something now. Okay, I really can't see anything. Okay, this is kind of weird. Let's just go ahead and light something now, right? And in those moments of that antsy kind of feeling, that's what, what we kind of get stuck in in regular life. Where we think, okay, God, you can go ahead and do something because I'm tired of being here. Okay, you can, yeah, I'm going to pray about that some more because I need this to change because, whew, yeah, I don't like where, where I'm at right now at all. And we wait, and we wait in anticipation of something to let us see something differently or something to change, and that is the light get that's brought in. And on Christmas Eve, that light we light is the representation of the light of Jesus being brought into the world. And even with one tiny spark, the room changes. There's a little glimmer of, oh, and your eyes are drawn toward that particular section in the room. That's the light. And then from that one candle, we light another candle, and then that candle lights another candle. And then that feeling as you look around, and there's so much light because everyone's lit their own candle. And from my candle, I can see what you're doing. And it gives me hope and, and goodness in my heart. And it is just one of those spectacular moments of Christmas. And hopefully you leave Christmas Eve service having lit your candle and having lit your heart so that you can walk into Christmas, walk into the days after Christmas, knowing that you have rekindled that spark. There is hope that's been brought into the world. Therefore, we can have peace and joy and experience love. And that goodness should carry us through until Easter. Well, it should carry us through, but the next big thing is really Easter. And I love that. I love that moment about light. The cool thing is that we kind of just get used to being in light, right? First world problems, we walk into a room, flip, turn on the light, right? When we leave somewhere, someone's always saying, oh, turn off the lights, right? There's so many lights, just turn off the lights. Um, I am still mystified by the light in the refrigerator. You know, open it up, boom, light. I think that's really cool, especially when it's you're trying to sneak something late at night and it's dark. So this concept of light is everywhere. And sadly, we just kind of get used to there being a lot of light. And this reminds us that the time of darkness is just as important as the time where we get light and that the light is always there. Even if it's just one little spark, it can change and illuminate the way you're thinking. So in the notes that Adam has for us, it says to reflect on a time in your life when you were hurting or struggling and someone gave you peace. And then to remind you that everyone has had these experiences, which is why you offer those to other people, right? Okay, so I'd like to read a section out of the book. And it says, this is um, John, in one of the scriptures I gave you to read, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came from being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Then skipping down, verse 10. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Now, these words inspire awe, right? Those are powerful words. The word came into the world lived and dwelt among us, and now we have that freedom. There's a little thing in the book, I'm just going to read this right here, that says, far more than the birth of a baby, 
Christmas is about the God who created and sustains the universe breaking into our world. Light and life, word and flesh, grace and truth, the glory of a father's only son. It's amazing to me when you think about how many scriptures there are about light and about darkness and how that inspires people and draws people. I would assume that when Moses was walking along and that bush burst into flames in the darkness that he was like, whoa, what's that light? And then he realized what it was and it became even cooler. There's something about a fire that inspires a certain feeling around a campfire when you're with your friends and you're kind of talking about things, things get more serious or maybe more deep on a deeper conversational level. There's something about lighting a candle when you're trying to set a mood or maybe you're having some prayer time or maybe you just want there to be a warm feeling in your house. We, we are drawn to light in so many different ways. I'm going to read another section of this that says, this is the, the reading out of John again. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. And then he says very pointedly, this is the point of Christmas. It is the celebration of light piercing our darkness, God's light coming to us to enlighten our lives. We need not fear that we will stumble or become lost because we are no longer trying to find our way in the dark. We have the light of Christ by which we walk. Now, there's a lot more to this one. And he talks a lot about the light and he talks about what the word of God means. What I really want to focus on is that particular passage. We no longer have to stumble in the darkness because we have the light. Now, I know it's been one of those years you might not want to remember. And you could probably look and see a whole lot more darkness of 2020 than you can see light. And here's where the goodness comes in. You got to look for the light, folks. You can't just sit around complaining that you've been in the dark. You got to look for the light. If you remember, we did an activity, I don't know, last year, I guess, where I took you into the sanctuary and we turned out all the lights. And I said, if I have flashlight and you're trying to get somewhere, your instinct is for me to want to shine it on the destination, right? If I were trying to get from here to the, the door in the FLC and there was no light in here, your instinct is to turn on a light by the door so that you can see where you're going and you can figure it out, right? That's not how it works. What God does for us is that God shines a light where we are so that we can see and participate where we are. Because if the light just shone at the door and I tried to get from here to there, y'all don't see it, but there's a whole bunch of chairs in here and I would make a big mess, hurt myself, break a chair. It would be bad, right? So God comes to us where we are and he shines the light in front of us to allow us to participate and be present. And then we can see where we are so that we can take another step forward. And there's another pool of light as we take steps forward. And that is walking in faith. And that's what it's all about is that God will bring his light when we need it and shine it for us if we just stay present and have faith in that moment. We'll get to our destination. And so in this particular season, the coolest thing happened. God came and he sent a baby and he said, here is the light of the world. And you'll see it because I'm going to put a big light in the sky and you can find it by following that light. And here is the light of the world and it will dwell among you and it will change everything. Now, what will come of it? You'll have to wait and see. Just follow along faithfully wherever the light leads. So I'm here to encourage you. If 2020 was full of darkness, look for the light. Find the light in 2021. Find the light in your family celebrations at Christmas. Find the light as you're driving around in your car and you can't find a perfect parking space for those of you that are driving. Find the light when you are sitting with someone and your sibling is irritating you to no end. Find the light. Do not dwell in the darkness because we have been given a gift. We have the light. And now our job is to face the light, not away from it, but to face the light so that others can be drawn to it. So in 2021, it's simple, y'all. Take the gift that has been given to us. This week as you celebrate Christmas, remember that there is a light that's been given. And we are to choose it every day so that others can see it, so they'll be drawn to us and make 2021 the brightest year yet. Merry Christmas.